Hello, 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 and welcome back to the RuPaul's Drag Race Recap here on Reality TV Rehap Ups. I'm your host, Liana Boris, and we are here to talk about Drag Race All-Stars Season 6, Episode nine and uh yeah um the drag tots full episode and i am very curious to hear the opinions of all of the panelists here today and we have of course our fabulous absolutely wonderful my heart goes out to this incredible team that i just like could not be happier to be working with <laughs> it is first let me bring in the wonderful beth dixon beth how are you i'm feeling pretty good um this was an interesting drag race challenge um I can't wait to get into the details of it because I have a lot of thoughts and they're not all negative. It's weird. I'm not used to okay. not having only negative thoughts about things. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Let's round up. It's yeah. all about the tots. Um, you just heard his fabulous voice. It is Amon Adwin. Amon, how are you? I'm great. I am, you know, I, I didn't realize that drag tots was a thing that was living and breathing and kicking and screaming. I didn't know that it was an actual mm -hmm. show, but um. Mm -hmm. This was definitely the longest commercial for them. So yes, <laughs> yeah. So so this episode was all about drag tots, which I remember seeing an advertisement at one point, and then part of me thought it was a fever dream. But then I went back and checked Wow Presents Plus. It's coming back for a second season, apparently. I mean, okay. Beth, I know that you had seen an episode, right, of Drag yeah. Tots? Okay, so i think i had drag tots mixed up with the superhero one that they had like there was like a drag superhero show that was on netflix and oh okay like it had like other drag queens like trixie had voiced somebody i don't and shangela had voiced somebody and i think this was like a remake of something in brazil it was like awful i've actually i don't think i've ever seen a, a drag tots episode um, okay okay i i watched um they're only the first season they're like three minute episodes mm -hmm. oh, okay and I can handle it that. was like the commentary that we got with bianca and latrice it's effectively those lines a little bit on repeat with a little bit more detail it is wow that makes sense <laughs> fine i guess so what's, so what's the what's the premise they're <laughs> so, like just the first episode was all about reading. And so they teach little Adore Delano's character whose name was like, it was Roxy something. And I was like, I thought it was gonna be Roxy Andrews, but it wasn't, it was actually Adore Delano who did the voice. And so they taught little Roxy about reading and and she's like oh no i could never be shady and then she's you know shady right whatever <laughs> that was effectively the premise rupaul plays okay. corny the unicorn the same one that we see in the introduction here and mm -hmm. then bianca's in it latrice was in it um adore and valentina i think were the queens that did the voices but it just it felt like all of them also did their voice acting in completely separate rooms and it, there was no integration in the same way here that just felt like they just reused some lines or it was just very random with the two queens. Anyway, so that was kind of the whole thing. I guess it's back for a season two. So, yeah, like what Amon said, uh, essentially the longest commercial for drag tots I've ever seen. So 30 minutes worth of a whole season. Yeah. There's 10 episodes. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, could, yeah. I could get behind that. <laughs> I don't know. It was very much like, uh, stop trying to make drag tots happen. It's never <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> I can't wait to be like, I'm going to be that aunt someday that's like, oh, I'm taking care of you today. Okay, great. And I'm yes. like, mm, you want to watch tots. what? We're going to watch drag tots. Okay, here you go, honey. Is, yeah. it, is, it, is it like appropriate for kids? Like, are there anything? Because if it's on Wild Presents Plus, that's like not really a kid friendly type site. So you kind of have to go out of your way if you want to show it to your kids. But is it like, could you show it to your kids? <laughs> uh, okay, so the first like the first little episode that I watched, I think would be okay. The kids might not get some of the insults, like some of the deeper reads. Mm. So maybe it's a book. I don't know. I've, I have no concept. I haven't watched children's television in forever, so <laughs> yeah, <sure you laughs> uh, maybe. But there's there's a lot of shows that I grew up on in the '90s that definitely had adult humor in it, and I've like gone back yeah. like the Rugrats. Yeah, a oh, lot yeah. of adult humor in it. Hey Arnold, <laughs> like all of these cartoons that completely like whoop over my head when I was a child. So right. So I think yeah, I think the kids would just appreciate the fun colors and all of that kind yeah. of stuff. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm about right. to be that aunt. It's going to be great. I do, well, that's actually for, so Mike Bloom's son, when he turned one, we got him a couple of gifts. And one of the things we got was a drag race, it, or not a drag race. It was a drag queen book, like children's book, mm-hmm. but it was oh, for, so it was for drag queens. Yeah. So I was like, ha, 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 ha. Yes, it's so cute. I love that. Proselytize them early, starting yes. young. <laughs> Get a mother young. Bring them in the fold. <laughs> okay. Oh God, that's great. All right, let's uh, let's jump into the episode. So, you know, we get a few things uh, after the elimination. Um, there's not uh, really a whole lot here. Um, you know, everybody voted for Pandora, except for Pandora, who voted for Trinity. And uh, and then, of course, Amon, we get the joke of Ginger Minge being the lip sync assassin of All-Star Season 6, which I <laughs> realized was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's. I was surprised that Raja tried to come for Ginger like that when Ginger really could say like, "Well, I, I want my lip syncs, girl. What about you?" So, yeah, but, yeah, but she and she won them with, you know, her 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 Ginger charm and the humor of it all, without the dips and the flips and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, it, interesting that you have somebody like Trinity K. Bonet that we've all been wanting to see come back, really not really be the lip sync lip syncer of the season. Very interesting. <laughs> well, and it's also interesting too because I think a lot of people forget that you know Ginger survived at least two lip syncs in season seven. Not that that makes her an assassin, but it does. Like we know what her chops are, um, mm-hmm. and she's going to be someone who's entertaining. And we all know the name of the game of Drag Race is make RuPaul laugh. It doesn't matter. It could be the most serious song, but if you happen to make RuPaul laugh. You're good. So like, there it is, Ginger honey. was always going to do well, even if it was like, oh, okay, let's let's do something that's like super, sm- like if there was going to be like a natural woman, like Latrice Royale, like versus Ginger Minj thing. I'm, I'm sure Ginger has the emotional range to do anything from serious to the comic, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about uh, the next day in the workroom. So this is where we get, instead of RuPaul, aha, it is, I thought it was Horny the Unicorn, which to me made more sense because it's like a horn and then it's yeah. also horny, so it's subversive, right? Which is like the whole thing that RuPaul's talking about. No, no, it is Corny the Unicorn. Okay, <laughs> not horny. Got it. <laughs> Maybe Aunt Beth won't show this to her. <laughs> No, I'm telling you it's corny, not horny. It's not <laughs> horny. I know, but I'm just sitting here thinking like some kind of like, you know, like two-year-old going home and like, I watch horny. <laughs> it's like, what? No, I'm sorry, what horny. did Aunt Beth show you? <laughs> Explain this to me. Uh, well, so, so yeah, so that that whole thing happens. Um, but we actually get a mini challenge this episode, which I think is the first mini challenge we've had since the reading, reading challenge. challenge. Mm-hmm. So it was it was nice to finally get this. And I I don't know. I had a fun time with the the class superlatives. I mean, Amon, was there any takeaways here that you thought were fun? I was able to. I was kind of playing alongside them, and I feel like mm-hmm. I got most of them correct. Somebody tweeted, I forget who it was. I would give them a shout out, but they were like, "So this just proves this mini challenge just proves that every single reality television show needs to have like a Survivor esque, like vote for this person if like consensus challenge essentially." And I'm right. like, you know what, you might be right. I mean, it's always a good way to start some drama, especially if you're asking shady questions. So. Yeah, um, nothing, nothing huge. Um, I guess. Wait, who did they say was going to go home next? Was it Eureka or was it? Oh yeah, it was a tie. Ended, it, yes, it was a tie, and this ended up being like a whole thing because mm-hmm. so Eureka votes for Raja. Eureka was the only one to vote for Raja. Ginger and Raja both voted for Eureka, and then mm. Kylie and Trinity voted for Trinity. Which I was like, did Trinity not understand the assignment, Beth? I think what she was trying to do is say, these bitches are going to say me, so I'm going to get the point. Oh. And so she wrote for herself. I don't okay. think that she was actually thinking that she was going to go home. I was going to say, let's not bring back season six, Trinity. Come on now. Come on <laughs> oh, now, girl, this. but then she gets into it and untucked. It was so freaking funny. To, or was it in the normal Well, she episode? forgot that she had written herself, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think I think this was an untucked. But she had forgotten that she had written herself. She thought Ginger wrote down Trinity. She so she was mad at Ginger. Like, she's like, what? Why'd you write? Why'd you write my name down? And Ginger's like, I didn't know about Eureka. And Eureka. And she's like, what do you mean? And she's like, I voted for Eureka. You voted for yourself. She's like, oh, I fucking forgot I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 
Yeah, which was hilarious. So <laughs> I, you know, I thought this was actually a interesting way to do the question that they like to do on the runway, which is who do you think is going to go home next, right? I mean, mm -hmm. effectively, they did it here. And then they kind of had the whole episode to really play with that because I felt like a lot of the conversations kind of ended up coming back to some of the answers, especially Trinity. Uh, being the moodiest. So everybody thought that she was the moodiest, followed by her being the moodiest about being called the moodiest. <laughs> it just felt like very fitting. And then Eureka's like, well, I'm going to take every negative thing and make myself a supervillain for the challenge for this. And I'm like, you know what? I want them to always do this challenge now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, it's, it's sort of like it's similar to the who should go home, you know, and why question, mm -hmm. but just a little bit more. So it's like, it's like on steroids a bit because there's like more questions to ask and you don't give them a lot of time to talk about it until after it's over. So they have to just sit here. Like, so imagine you're just sitting there getting all these negative critiques over and over again. Yeah. You can't do shit until <laughs> RuPaul leaves the room. So I think I it's just it. so great because it, it clearly was like a production sat back and went, you know what? They're not fighting enough. Let's They're really not. And yeah, like, Thank you, production. More. Thank you for Thank this you. doing us this solid because this is not like we said last week. This is not the season that you guys promised us. So thank you for a little bit of drama. Yeah, yeah you're like the drama of what <laughs> of them being like. I ran out of lipstick. Do you have more I can use? They're like, yes. Here's three right. different shades, and you're like. Oh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you had Eureka get messiest, gassiest, bossiest, and shadiest in a row. Mm. And she's just kind of like laughing about the whole thing. So I also kind of feel like they tried so hard to get drama. They got a little bit with Trinity, but Eureka is just like, haha, you know, she's gonna like, laugh yeah, it off. That's yeah, me, baby. I know. That's me. That's right. Yep. <laughs> And this is why I wish to a certain extent some of the queens that have been gone could have done this challenge. So I'm sitting back and being like, you know, Yada would have been like, Oh, out of tear. It would have been mm -hmm. amazing. It would have been amazing. <laughs> Do it earlier. Do it yeah. earlier in the season. <laughs> Next time. Next time. It's like, you know what? They also did that Despies Awards in mm. season seven where they had like voted for the queens and whoever won. Uh, you know, had to come up and do an acceptance speech. And I'm sitting back and I'm like, you know what? Bring back the award show challenge too, because that was another thing that created just a tiny bit of drama. Mm -hmm. where they were like, so Violet, people voted you the shadiest queen. Like, what do you think about that? And then you get a couple of really good <laughs> confessionals and such out of it. I'm like, okay, bring that back, but do it for an all-star season. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. I uh, The other part of me is thinking, like, just waiting for the game within a game. And I was like, is this the game within a game? <laughs> Where is the game within a game? Yeah. This is a game. There's a game. Another game within a game. No. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, we wrap up the mini challenge. I, I think we're all kind of on the same page. It was a lot of fun. And we get in to the main challenge next. So what the queens have to do is they have to transform themselves into a live action character that takes a visit to the world of drag tots now streaming on wow presents plus thanks for the plug Rue. And they have to create this character with a captivating look, a backstory and magical powers, which I've, I've, I felt like, okay, I, I didn't watch enough drag tots to see if they had magical powers, but that felt a little out of place to me, but fine. And it seemed like when we get to the main stage, they all kind of had the same script that they had to like walk through um, with the challenge. To me, Amon, this reminded me of the season nine, like the, the sidekick challenge where they had to create their like the little sidekick piece. yeah like um the, oh the, yeah, yeah 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 yeah. remember and they had the little faces or whatever thank you the starfish yes. that one <laughs> yes exactly that's what i thought of for, with this challenge yeah it, it it was i i i'm always a big fan of like the ultra ego challenges because they do sort of force the queens to sort of step outside of themselves and you know i mean as a drag queen a lot of the time you already are larger than life so for you to have to like create something else based off of that larger than life character has always been really fun to watch. Um, RuPaul, I felt like was uh, really shitting on a lot of, a lot of their ideas, which mm -hmm. I, I kind of found <laughs> fun to watch because <laughs> so many of them had like these straightforward um, things they were going to do, especially Raja. And then RuPaul is like literally laughing in her face about, um, about her, her name, the queen name. see me. And Raja is just sitting there like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I, didn't yeah, think it was, I didn't think it was that bad, but okay. <laughs> yeah, about the walkthrough, Rue was just, yeah, throwing out all her opinions. It was hilarious because she loved Kylie's, which felt like the most basic of them all. And then when exactly what Amon said, when it got to Queen Seamy, she's like, Seamy, Seamy, Seamy. 
semen? Se- 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 semen. She's like, all I'm semen. getting is semen here. Semen. Um, yeah, I think w- what I love about when there's like branding challenges or things like this where queens are coming up with their idea, Rue will always be like, hmm, I don't know if I like that. And just be like, <laughs> and, like Rue likes to play with like the gray areas and being like, I could be helping you or I could be fucking up your head right now. Mm-hmm. What do you, what do you want to do? And I love that, uh, like he literally will go through the workroom now and just be like, I'm just going to say like how I feel about something. And and I want to add to their like mental stress and, and that'll make good television. It's producer Rue, right? Hey. <laughs> hey. Great that drama. But you think about like other Queens, like there have been Queens that have had, had to change like what they did and they don't succeed because it wasn't their first thought. And then you have Queens that say, no, I'm going to stick with what I'm doing. And then they win anyway, like Katya and all stars too, uh, with Mm -hmm. the the mist thing. I forgot Mm -hmm. what it's called though. I'm trying to, what was the word that RuPaul really, really liked? Mexican, Mexican Tessin. Mexican Tessin. (laughs) What is Mexican Tessin? Is it is a it Mexican any, is it, delicatessen? Is it, <laughs> <laughs> it's a contestant. Let's look it I up. thought it was, I, I was like, is it a drug, like a drug? Kind of sounds like it could be a pharmaceutical. Not like a fun it, one, but like one that cures like arthritis. Yeah, Not it that does, arth- I could definitely hear that being in a commercial. Use Mexicatessin. If oh you my God. If you have side effects. Yeah. There's literally an article that says, what is the meaning of Mexicatessin? RuPaul reveals favorite word. This is two days ago. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. Did they answer it in the article? Is, what is Mexicatessin? Is what is the meaning of Mexicatessin? In Thursday's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars, um, RuPaul shared their favorite word. Unfamiliar with the word Mexicatessin. Viewers took to Twitter on the lookout for its meaning. Um, I just love that there's a whole article that's like, okay, someone did say though, for everyone asking, it's a Mexican delicatessen. So exactly what Amon oh, said. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Mexicatessen. Okay. Come Mexicatessen. On, yes. Queen Mexicatessen. <laughs> Mexican, I see this Mexicatessen is a family owned and operated small business in Toronto. Oh, okay. So there's just a business in Toronto called Mexicatessen. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, a- there's a, oh, there's one in California. There's a Yelp oh. page for it. Mexicatessen. Oh, it's closed. Oh, Mexicatessen. Mexican test. That's closed on Sundays. Okay. Anyway, all right. So yeah. So RuPaul's got some weird obsession with Mexican testing. That's fine. Um, but Raja is able to pivot. You know, obviously. I mean, she takes in a lot of the input that she gets, and uh, and it seems like Trinity also changed. I mean, we didn't really get to hear Trinity's character. I think during the walkthrough, but she ends up, you know, doing the runway coach. Felicia the feline, I believe was her name. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so yeah. So I mean, the work through, I think, makes some changes potentially because we definitely, we get a change for sure with Raja. Yeah. Okay. I mean, honestly, that's about it <laughs> with anything before. I mean, I think we just get into uh, some of these challenges or some of the um, the creative characters that they come up with. I think before we do that, we definitely have to address RuPaul uh, with the runway entrance. So RuPaul (laughs) comes out, you know, looking cute, looking snatched, and um, moves in a way that I believe would be best described as voguing, dancing. I don't know. That is quite generous. That was very generous of you. Leon. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the closest thing that I could match it with, but I don't know. I'm not quite sure how I would talk about this. I'm not sure what inspired this. Well, movement. I got laughing because I tweeted, uh, RuPaul really said, I'm going to give you straight white girl and a gay bar for drinks and realness. <laughs> yeah. And then a local drag queen where I was, you know, hi, I'm the white girl that comes off a street, like at a bar or whatever kind of thing. She like knows me from this bar. And she said, it's quite literally the most audience members uh, participating in games in a drag show real this. And I was like, okay, call me out. All right, I'm right here. Like, yes. But it is true. Like it's how many times have you seen people just be like, I know how to vote. I'm voguing. And I'm like, me. no, me. I don't know how to vote. So I'm not going to attempt it kind of thing. Yeah, that's my white ass in the club. I'm voguing. Look at me vogue. <laughs> anyway, good job, RuPaul. You move. It reminded me of what was the finale where RuPaul did the like dance routine? Do you guys remember what that was? 
that was it, 11? Was it 11? Was it 11 with the backup dancers? Is that, I did I fever 11. drain that? Okay, no, no, okay. You, no, no, you okay, were, that was you were all. Yeah, we collectively Nobody lived that knows. experience. It was, it was 13. It was, it was, was the most recent one. No. Oh. Was okay. it? Like a theater was nobody in it. And RuPaul's like <laughs> dancing with the backup dancers and such. Wasn't that? Didn't oh, that also wow. happen? Oh my God. I have That's no idea. Because 13 is so long. It just feels <laughs> like it. <laughs> 13 was so long. It feels like two seasons before it. It right, really right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes RuPaul just gets in these moods. Sometimes where like he is a little bit more playful than usual, and I think mm -hmm. that this was just a manifestation. I'll never forget like one of the walkthroughs that he did. I think it was like either eleven or twelve, where everybody on Twitter was like, "What is RuPaul on?" Like, because he was just oh, super, laughing, super. Right? He was laughing. He was like super energetic. He was just like. He was like really. He was like he was his his banter and his back and forth was like really spot on and quick that day. I was like, what? And people was like, he definitely was beforehand that because shit. what the hell is going on? Oh my so god! I think this is just one of those days. Which is like, oh, I'm feeling myself. Let me just mm, mm, mm. yeah. Like, <laughs> Come, oh my god! But it, it is interesting too, actually, that we bring this up because um, there are people from the house or the, sorry, the house. Um, from the ball scene from different houses that have been basically be like, cool, appropriate this culture even more, RuPaul. Show us that you actually have nothing to do with this scene and have just been making money off of it. Cool. And I'm just like, oh shit. Like I've seen like people from like who have been on Legendary and like being Ooh, like, oh, this is coming great. for him. And then of course you have the people who are like, well, he was he was part of the ball scene. They're like, honey, he was never a part of the ball scene. Michelle Visage, <laughs> she was part of the ball scene. RuPaul was famous and making money off of the idea of oh i'm also gay and f like femme and black and and that kind of thing so therefore i'm a they Jason. got the girls started and i was like Ooh. <laughs> so very interesting uh perspectives oh that i i respect, I hmm. respect it. category is fracking realness <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> uh let's talk about this uh so the one thing that was a through line throughout all of these performances is that we had the bianca del rio and latrice royale drag taught characters as their animated versions right telling i guess jokes or like giving the same kind of commentary that might be given during a runway which um i don't know i, I don't know how you felt about this amon because to me it just felt so forced and a little awkward but again full drag tots promotion here so yeah i mean i was i really wanted I, what i thought was going to happen was that they were going to create an, like a the, the live action version of themselves and i thought that they were, we were going to see an animated version as well I right. thought that there was going to be a quick artist on set or whatever that could just sketch out their their animated counterpart and we would be able to see them like side by side on the stage this sort of felt sort of like i don't know the, it kind of felt flat to me like some of the looks were great or whatever but i just wasn't expecting this to be the that was it and so i was sort mm -hmm. of just expecting more the entire time it was interesting too. Um, they have yet to bring back any previous contestants or winners to actually be on the judges panel, but I was like, all right, love Charlie. Uh, what's it? X E X. I always, yeah, forget. Charlie X E X. I always want to say C X C. And then I'm like, no, 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 that's wrong. X E X. <laughs> that's the other way around. Um, like, great. That's wonderful. Like, fully just have the queens as a part of the panel then. If you're going to like have them making comments and such, like just make them the panel. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I just kind of felt like that. Also, then we wouldn't have had that horrible sound cho uh, song choice that we'll get into later for uh, a lip sync. Um, yeah, we'll t we'll talk about boom clap. Uh, but, but I yeah, I mean, it just uh, I I thought similarly to Amon that I thought they were gonna have some type of animated version of themselves, even if it's just like a oh, just like a little shot of them, you know, hanging out or something like that. But you know, fine, whatever. It kind of just makes everything sort of like harder to critique, at least for me, because like it was just like oh, just create a your. because the challenge was presented as you're creating a live action version of the animated version. It's like well. There isn't an animated version that. yet. So what are we really critiquing here? They can just kind of wear whatever they want to wear this yeah. week and 
ha- just write down some words mm-hmm. to say. So it's just like this, see what this feels a little loosey goosey, but okay, fine, whatever. Drag talks it is. Yeah. <laughs> and I do think that um th- what I thought was interesting is I sat back and I was like, I wonder why they're not lip syncing to their script. And then that, it looked yeah. like it was actually a part of like, based off of some of the critiques that they were getting, which was like, it's really hard to like not move your lips to the script and like have to act it out with your body and your face. And I was like, Oh, I guess this was a part of the challenge that was made unclear to us or whatever. But Maybe I actually, this is- an audition for to be on season two to get your character added to season two. I actually think that that's what it was about, though, because they said something about like a your character like guest star or something like that on the show. But I don't know, like it wasn't made clear if that's really what they're going for or not. Hmm. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I I just uh, overall, I would say that it felt like this challenge to me fell a little flat just because what Aman is saying about the unclear criteria. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, I, I mean, everybody did fine as far as I could tell. So it was yeah, just like difficult like- to parse out, you know? Uh, okay. Well, let's, let's get into some of the individual performances, I guess, if you want to call it that uh, we'll start with Trinity K. Bonet here, who did the, uh, Shoot, what was her name? Something the feline. <laughs> Let me find I couldn't my notes. Felicia, Felicia, the feline. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, like we were saying, so they come out, they have their co- their co- character costume on, and then they're sort of acting it out to this voiceover thing, mm-hmm. which I guess is telling you something about their character, Beth. I mean, that's. Yeah, and it's That's similar. It. It's similar to when, um, again, going back to the season nine or to the alter, like the the super villain thing in season ten. This is really a design challenge, but it's not just designing the outfit. It's designing a character, and then mm-hmm. you have to bring that character to life based off of I'm sure certain props that they had to follow. Um, And what I like about this is that it really shows the people who have the ability to act because acting in this challenge is all about your nonverbal communication cues, which is really what, in my opinion, makes a good actor is somebody who can invoke their entire body and their, um, I said evoke and then I immediately started thinking about Derek F. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) I evoke to evict. I evoke. Um, Sorry. (laughs) But some people who can like utilize their whole body and their face and different things to, to act out a character. But they also had to like write the script that they're acting And it's just like, it's, I actually think that there's quite a bit here that's really interesting, but to your points, like Mm -hmm. there's just something missing with it too. Like, okay. You know, like they had the, the sidekicks that were basically their faces over a design, like a a picture. Like, even if that was what it was supposed to be, um, I don't know. It just, it's very interesting. I think that. I wonder if the Queens were aware that uh, uh, the animated versions of Latrice and um, Bianca, Bianca, Bianca we're going to be there because I don't think I don't think I've seen any of them sort of interact with them. I wonder if they even knew that that was even a thing um, going into this challenge, and I wonder if they had known would that have changed anything about this? Probably not, but mm. I, I, this whole thing is just kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so when I was watching this, I the, when Trinity and this is no fault to Trinity, it just so happened that she was the first one. I was thinking, why is she just standing in the middle? There's trees on the outside. There's flowers kind of on the outside. And plus, isn't she a runway coach? Isn't she? Or that was, you know, her whole character Mm -hmm. thing. So shouldn't she be walking around and interacting with the scenery and like posing with a tree or whatever? But they didn't do any of that because clearly none of them were allowed to move around. They had to just stay on their mark in the middle of the stage, which was also weird because I know Michelle gave the critique to, I I can't remember who, um, but it was like, it, well, you you know, I know you're just posing or something like that. I, I can't even remember what it was now because I remember yeah. feeling frustrated in the moment. It was like, well, what do you expect them to do? They're stuck in the same spot. You're not going to allow them to walk around. <laughs> so is it about the character creation? Is it about the outfit? Because I felt like Trinity here probably had, you know, a fully vi- visual character because she transformed herself into a cat. So to me, I'm like, this is definitely a character and this is not Trinity. Whereas if I compare to Ginger who comes out next, I'm like, it's just ginger. ginger. <laughs> yeah. 
It's just gender. Well, that's what was interesting is, are you creating yourself as a drag tot or are you creating a whole new character? Because I actually was like, I thought they had to come out as a drag tot. So when Trinity comes out as not a drag tot, but a character who could be on the show, I just kind of sat back and I was like, I have no idea if this fits the assignment or not. <laughs> and I don't care because it was cool and I liked it. <laughs> but I like sat back and I was like, I don't know how to judge people. Like, what is the, yeah. what's the rubric here? Yeah. I don't know about this look um, for me. I think the character was fine. I like the sort of play on words for furly. Shall I? I thought it was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Something about, something about the, the, the white parts of the, of the outfit feel a little paper ish to me. It felt, it, I don't know. It kind of feels like I get the design that she's going mm -hmm. for, but something about it makes it look like it's unfinished to me. Mm. Yeah. yeah it's definitely I mean I think from far away you can't tell as much but it's some, there's something about the edges I think that also yeah. make it feel a little bit unfinished uh, but from far away I think it looks cute I like the shape of the tail mm -hmm. but yeah when you kind of get into the nitty gritty and there's something about the white fabric also Amon to your point mm -hmm. that it's like it was like different types of fabric or something it's kind of hard to yeah. see the images that I've chosen but um, and maybe it was just it didn't come across well on camera or something like mm -hmm. that because yeah i don't know it does look like it's sparkly on the up close and then like when you look at it from afar it just looks white so i mm -hmm. think something with the lighting for in the camera probably just doesn't translate as well um i would agree i felt like this was like this felt like to me mom made my drag halloween costume <laughs> um but I, I have a Halloween costume that looks eerily similar to this that my mom made me. So like when you, that, that, I, I felt that. I felt that. <laughs> Wait, okay. <laughs> the fact that you have something similar to this, like, I'm like, you know what? Go Liana's mom. That's great. <laughs> I don't know? like, near, I don't like nearly as fabulous, but it's absolutely a bodysuit with like fur patches glued to it. So... <laughs> But, okay, you know, my brother was a traffic light one year. They put him in a cardboard box, painted it green, cut three holes with three no. different colors of saran wrap, and he had a little flashlight, <laughs> and he chose which one oh, he was going Oh, that's cute, though. Isn't that I like the flashlight. Yeah. I liked it because it meant that he didn't have arms on the outside, and I pushed him over, then he couldn't get up. <laughs> oh, my God. Beth's just using it to be a bully. Got it? Yes. <laughs> Um, and this is when they made me be Clara Barton. So I was like the first female nurse or something like that. <laughs> they, <laughs> how old were you? I was eight. <laughs> he was six. Um, so I was just like a really great older sibling. But th th this to me is like a much more glamorized version of like what I'm trying to get across here. Like those bits of unfinished pieces like you guys are talking about that I can see like what she was going for. I just don't know if it got all the way there um mm -hmm. i love her makeup i love her makeup yeah oh yeah the makeup looks gorgeous and the fact that she you know is trying to paint as a cat i think mm -hmm. uh, is yeah is really impressive okay let's talk about ginger minge if you're uh, watching the video version i couldn't find a good shot of her shoes so there's like a separate little shot of her shoes <laughs> off to the side i tried to line it up with her feet Shoe but cam. like it looked really terrible uh all right so, so as i kind of alluded uh ginger came out as ginger i thought uh but yep. she did have a character her name was tara bell or there was a longer name but i didn't write it down um and she has something her Bella Rose, something 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 yeah the third <laughs> Junior and the third. Junior the third. And she is the sort of southern belle of the drag tot bunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that yeah. she's playing that kind of like pageant queen one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it definitely fits her on. Yeah, the look the look is 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 great. Um it's it's classic ginger. I I do like the shoes a lot. I like I like the, the rose petals on the shoes. Um the character was also spot on Ginger. I mean, I feel like it was something that you could definitely watch her perform at any one of her gigs. Um, I think that RuPaul enjoyed it as well. I feel like it was a pretty solid, it, she was good at being Ginger and I guess that's all you really needed to do, I guess. I mean, like, once again, it's hard, it's hard with this challenge. So um, I wasn't really getting a lot of tot energy though. You know, like if I'm trying to be critical, like mm -hmm. you didn't really feel toddler-ish to me, maybe I wanted more I wanted more childlike mannerisms. This felt very 
southern older woman. That's what I was getting. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, yeah. I would agree with you. And then they have like fully like Latrice and Bianca on the side, not acting like that's true. If that's, <laughs> that is true too. I'm, also like, I'm sitting back and I'm like, I because I had the same exact thought of on where I sat back and I was like, okay, well, Ginger just comes across mm -hmm. as a drag queen who's 35 years old doesn't come across as a toddler. But then I'm also like, well, Beyonce's Bianca's over on the other side being like, what, what were they trying to do on the drag? Like, it just like, <laughs> it had no like drag tot energy. Yeah. Cause I was going to say the only difference is that the animated drag tots are tiny and I know Ginger's short, yeah. but she's not that <laughs> short. So it doesn't it like surprised. quite work. Yeah. In the exact same way. Um, you know, I will, I will say the same, basically yes. echoing your thoughts here, Amon, about Ginger. Um, I, I thought it was strong. It was decent. But at the same time, I was like, I don't really know what we're doing here. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say for like a construction challenge perspective, uh, this is traditionally not Ginger's strong suit. So the fact she came out like this, I was like, OK, this is actually really good for Ginger putting together um, an outfit and uh, from scratch and such. But it's nothing spectacular. It's nothing mm -hmm. like I'm like, oh my gosh, she has changed the direction of drag. Tots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tots. I mean, this is better than some of the other things that she brought, I thought. So uh, <laughs> uh, it, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Just saying. Uh no, I mean, yeah, it was it was serviceable. It was fine. I thought that, you know, her voiceover also was fine. I was still in the middle of trying to figure out why they weren't moving again here. So that was also a little bit distracting. Um, but yeah, I like the, you know, she had some funny lines like charming the morning dew off the honeysuckle. I don't know why that made me laugh, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know she had horabelle which i i couldn't just i mean obviously with the interaction with michelle it was the whore abel but for her i think it was just horrible horabelle was the play yeah. on words but either way i think i like the way that it could could go either way so yeah all right Next up, we have the ultimate winner of the challenge, and that's Raja. Aman, she's dressed all in purple. Do you think that she deserved to win here? Um, I guess. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a nice look. It's a nice look. And, I, and she, uh, she, she even painted herself purple. I, I, I do like the look. I think the look is probably probably one of the, I think it, I think it might be the best mm. um, look that we have. Um, I think it's just like, it's fun, it's flashy, it's edgy. She's following a theme. Like they've come to know her as the Purple Queen and she, now she's capitalizing on it. I love the fact that she, I think that she also had like some some ground to to run here because of the critiques that she got from Rue about like, oh, how that your first name isn't really selling me. And then so she switched it up and now Rue is gonna look at that and be like, okay, so you listen to me. So she had that as well in her in her pocket. So yeah, I mean, I think it was, I don't think it's like a, a win. Like if I'm w looking back on this season, I'm like, oh, how many people won that um, won challenges in that season? I'm probably going to forget that she won this challenge, but just know mm -hmm. that Roger won two challenges <laughs> like yeah. because it's so inconsequential. But I mean, you know what? I love Roger. So go, go ahead, girl. Fine. <laughs> I'll, take my point. <laughs> I'll take my point to the draft. <laughs> Yeah, I was uh, I was watching this with my mom and and she and I were like we're like watching the challenge and my mom's like what like was she the best or the worst? <laughs> like like that was sort of the difference between who she thought did well and who she thought did poorly because it's just it was very hard for someone who's a you know a extreme casual of the show to just know what was happening. And I yeah. don't think that the editing, I mean, they tried their best to do shots of the judges smiling while Raja is doing her voiceover, but you know, there's not a whole lot they can do here. Here's the thing: a lot of those smiles were questionable. Were they smiling with her or at not her? Like at her. Cause or yeah. cause like half the time they'll show Michelle Visage and she'll be like this, uh. <laughs> and yeah. then and then she's like, I was captivated when you were on, that. and I'm like, no, you uh, let's rewind the tapes because your face was betraying you here, and the only reason why you're saying this stuff now is because RuPaul decided they're in the top, so now you have to come up with positive things. I was captivated mm. the whole time. No, we have the footage. 
You sat there with a confused <laughs> roll look on your face. the tapes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's is something about the way that Raja moves that is really captivating. And I think the way that she did it here, but yeah, certainly, um, certainly, or at least the shot they chose in that moment was not exactly the best representative. Right. I mean, the other thing is that I will say her makeup. So I love the incorporation of the googly eyes. Love that. I, especially with the whole I see a queen kind of thing, the makeup I think is stunning. The fact that it looks like she's got a full beat, I mean, obviously she does, but like a full normal beat even though it's all purple like it's completely purple tinted That's love really that cool. the only issue is that because there's something with the lighting or the background or whatever she just blends in this is very much shades of ginger with her camouflage outfit in the workroom i just i felt like you could just take raja put her in the back of the stage and i wouldn't even know that she's there <laughs> yeah i uh, <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely see that. I think that anytime you play with these kind of like purplish blue, you're going to always have that issue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I didn't mind this outfit from her. I think what I liked, what she did over, say, like what Ginger did was that she did create a whole new kind of character. It wasn't like Raja as a drag tot. It was, I, I see a queen. I see a queen. Um, and, I, and I loved like, Oh, these are the things that she's going to teach and such. I, what I kind of wish we would see from Ginger is a little bit of variation of like what we have come to expect from her because she is somebody who I think um, is very talented at what she does, but it'd be really great to see something very, very different. Like if she came out with like, this could have been her opportunity to create a character that is, doesn't come from the pageant background like she does. And like, all these different kinds of aspects. And so that's what I really mm -hmm. liked what Raja did. And plus this outfit's kind of cool and it wouldn't have worked in any other runway. So I'm kind of here for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. If this was any other runway, I'd be like, what the fuck are you wearing? But for <laughs> this one, I'm like, oh yeah. I, I like, like it. it. I, like I think with the eyes. I think with the eyes is what I'm, I'm, I'm mostly getting at. Like, Yeah, the, yeah, well, the, yeah I'd say that the eyes are kind of weird. But I mean, I guess for I See You Queen, it had to be that right. way. I, I love the fact that it that the legs go right into the shoes. I love, I love outfits that. that do that. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. And to know that like she just made that too is really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm here yeah. for that. Mm hmm. Okay, let's talk about Eureka, who is the villain character based on, of course, the superlatives that happened early in the episode. And, you know, I will say Eureka still gets a lot of positive critiques from the judges, just a few sort of minor things that they felt the delivery was a bit muted, which again, I get, I just think it's tough when you're stuck in the same place and you can't move. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I don't know, Beth, what did you think about what Eureka pulled out today? I'm gonna be honest, I was just bored. Mm. Um, and especially for a villain, a villainess, I was like, oh, come on. I, I think that she was really low energy here. Um, and I and as I look at this, I'm like, okay, so this is if Fran Fine had uh designed um Mel uh, Melissa uh, Maleficent Maleficent, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Maleficent? Maleficent. 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 Mexican no. Testament. <laughs> wait, wait, what is it though? I don't know. Maleficent. Maleficent? What is, you're asking How what the name it? of the character is? No, I can't say it. No. How do you pronounce it? Maleficent. Maleficent. Right? It's like okay, Beth, Maleficent. But Maleficent. I'm confused now. Maleficent. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Maleficent. I had a whole joke going, and now the joke is that <laughs> doesn't know what the word is or the, the name is. I should say. Uh, the R H A P out of context is going to have a good one with this one. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> it's going to be good. Uh, good one. Yeah, but basically, I'm just trying to get at she just looks like it. It, it already looks like a queen or a villainess's like outfit from Disney. It's just mm -hmm. like okay, mm -hmm. cool. It's like a blue cheetah print mm. on it yeah yeah I especially since we know that eureka is a seamstress and she is capable of better types of things this kind of seems a little it seems a little bit sort of plain just a little just yeah. too homogenous and you know like i i'm always treading lightly when it comes to the fashion of bigger girls on the show because we know that the fashion world is just not set up for big girls half the time but we know that eureka is better at this we've seen her 
create better looks than this. So this, this felt very much like, uh, you know, it seems like you're kind of ringing this in just a little bit. And I know that I'm not a seamstress, so I know that, you know, I'm kind of backseat driving here, but I just feel like I've seen better from her in the past. So, you know, I'm just okay. I think it's tough because you lose, she just looks like a little head, like a little tiny round face on a body. I wish that the head piece and then the kind of, cause it, so from what I can tell, at least there's kind of, it almost looks like a scarf piece that comes down from the head. So the head piece kind of, the fabric comes down and I wish maybe mm -hmm. that had been a different color than the rest of the dress to kind yeah. of accent it slightly differently. Yeah. Um, but that, that's also probably why she was so quote unquote muted in her performance is because you're really only seeing her hands and her face. Right. Oh, because it all just it was going to fall off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just camouflages together. It's kind of like wearing a green, like a green bodysuit, you know, like, and you can only see yeah. the head and the arms move because yeah. it just kind of blends into the background, which I think probably did her a little bit of a disservice. I liked her voiceover. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I think she had a lot of really great jokes. I liked the dropping it like it's lukewarm. That made me laugh. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love I that actually, she was looking directly at RuPaul when she was listing all the adjectives. I'm messy. I'm bossy. Yes. You I'm see, guessing. Rue, I, I, I'm, I'm using the mini challenge. Come on, Rue. <laughs> Vulnerability, come on. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just think really what ultimately did her in is the track record, right? Because yep. she was the one queen who didn't have a win, and it was kind of the easiest way to just say, you know, sorry, mm -hmm. you, you just don't have a win. Yeah. yeah. The last queen is, of course, Kylie Sonique Love, who comes out as the witch. And, you know, we get a lot of her right up until she comes out on the runway, still trying to sew her outfit together, which, you know, was really interesting to see. But it, I could kind of tell why, because she had a lot of props. She had a book. Mm -hmm. She had the the bag, I guess, which I couldn't really see because I think it was all black and it just blended into her outfit. She had the broom that she had made, Beth. So it seemed like she'd spent a lot of time on the accessories as well as the outfit itself. Yeah, and it shows. Nope. Um, oh, yeah. Nope. yeah, don't look too close at the sleeves because you can see where she cut it. I'm looking at the <laughs> sleeves right now and I'm like, no, Whoa. don't look at the sleeves. <laughs> um, again, I think this comes across as homemade Halloween costume. I, I love the hoop skirt idea for a witch. And obviously she's just, just she's going to look amazing regardless of whatever she wears. Like she has proven that this season she is, she can wear anything and look amazing. Um, but I have to kind of like take that like perspective of it and like really look at the outfit and be like, okay, so how does it like I, I think that it's a great character i like what she did um i like the idea of there being a witch um drag top like cool that's awesome but i, I don't know i just i just kind of felt like overwhelming or like like an overwhelming sense of this is underwhelming to me <laughs> sure yeah i, I was overwhelmed. you were well i mean if we if they weren't going to do the thing where everyone would be in the bottom, I think she probably would have been in the bottom because it's just based off the, the judges' reactions. Like we, yeah. they cut to Michelle's face and she was like trying to understand what was going on. They cut to RuPaul's face and it was like the most deadpan. Like, what is this bitch doing? Like, yeah. But you know, I like the look though. I I mm -hmm. I, I sort of I, I I like that it's like so sheer and also shiny and you know a little bit of uh, you know. But I'm. I'm a big ass Harry Potter fan, so this kind of stuff is already in my proclivities. So <laughs> I like this stuff. I think the most entertaining part about it wasn't wasn't necessarily anything that um, that uh, Kylie was saying, which is more of the commentary from the judges, like the, just the corny ass broom puns with Bianca Del Rio saying, "Okay, who ordered broom service?" and Charlie XCX <laughs> saying, "Oh, she's coming out of the broom closet." I was chuckling more at that than I that was. was good. At, uh, <laughs> that so. was good. So. Yeah, I think I think that was tough. I you know, she she and Eureka were the two that I did have in the bottom. So that was my prediction, assuming that there were only going to be two in the bottom, which I think is yeah, yeah, totally fair. I, I love the fact that she did two different contacts. That was something that was really striking to me. Mm -hmm. But when your contacts are the thing that stood out the most in an outfit design challenge, or at least somewhat a design challenge, then I feel like it's a little bit of missing the mark there. But you know, I mean, again, I, I do kind of echo what the judges said at the beginning, which is that everybody did a, at least as far as I can tell, serviceable, you know, decent job. And so it's hard to kind of really drill down uh, into each of the Yeah, it's like we really were hoping that you guys would do better so that we could be inspired to add more to the cast of Drag Tots. But 
It's like, bitch, if y'all don't do some character creation on your own, like, yeah, don't you have writers? Oh no, well, we've seen acting and write, you know, challenges on the show, so I guess not. No, (laughs) they need to be fired. So I think what they're trying to do. This is not about the next drag superstar, like all star. This is about who can we add to the production team to make this a better show moving. Yeah. All right. So that does it uh, for each of the queens. And here, of course, we get Raja as the winner. And then everybody else is just in the bottom. And I don't know, to me, Amon, with Eureka really in her feelings, of course, I think she just saw the writing on the wall. I I have to imagine that that was the situation. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, she, I mean, she, she's been talking about it for the past two weeks about how she didn't need, she didn't have a win, and I think that she really expected for this challenge to be the challenge that she could scratch by and get one win right before finale, so that she could have a fighting chance. But the girls have been pretty fair for the most part in voting each other out, you know, based off of track record. So why should that stop now? I mean, strategically, maybe you do bring Eureka to the end, um, but you know what? Also. Strategically, there's still a lot of reasons to get rid of Eureka because she's still Eureka. She's still a big ass personality in in the show, and she's still someone that could end up snatching the crown in the end. If there's anybody that doesn't have any challenge wins that RuPaul will award a crown to, it would be Eureka. So mm-hmm. getting rid of her, hey, it's it's part of the course. I also look. It is interesting to me that the queens still in the competition have not even once mentioned the idea of somebody coming back or this game within a game that they were told the first episode like to me it's so interesting that we're not getting any sense of like every other all-stars has brought somebody back mm. in some i do well, wonder not all-stars born but yeah i thought about that too i wonder if they are not allowed to talk about it. Like if they're not like, cause they want the reaction of, oh my God, someone's coming back. You know what I mean? I wonder if yeah. like they are having conversations about it. If they're just choosing not to put it in the edit. Cause I mean, they're not dumb. They have to know that it's going on. Or if production is actually snowing them and being like, nope, n- not this time. You're like, when, when you're gone, you're gone. Cause of, because of COVID, when you're gone, you're gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I wonder yeah. if they actually don't actually think it maybe. But it is just very interesting because I still mm-hmm. would be questioning this, like this season, there's a game within a game. And I would sit back and be like, okay, but we have the same twist That's true. She did last definitely season. That, yeah. So it is interesting. Like why are, is the game within the game, the voting? Cause like, that's not how you described it last season. And that's exactly what's happening now. So I just, but I agree with you. I think that they're just not showing us. I'm sh- they have to be talking about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, uh, I I want to touch on one thing about Eureka before we talk about the lip sync, and it is kind of the the um, the record of it all because I'm looking at her record right now. She was safe, high, safe, high, high, low, high, high, eliminated. Mm-hmm. Like that's because she was high five of the you know nine episodes. That's mm-hmm. I mean, the- in my opinion. I don't think that makes her weaker than someone like Trinity, who's been in the bottom more That's often than saying. not and has a couple right. wins. I'm yeah. like, she could still win. So, so yeah, I, it's it's just, it's kind of interesting. Cause I think I remember maybe it was in, was it in All Stars 2 when they just sort of had, you know, started this concept of like, you know, how, what what counts for what and like mm-hmm. assigning point values okay so if you get a win it's four points but if you're high well that's all three points so if you only have one point you know what i mean blah 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 whatever you could do the math i just mm-hmm. i don't think it was so far gone foregone a conclusion but it's so easy to just set, draw the line in the sand of it's a win and then that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's one it. of my favorite things from all stars too is getting Alyssa edwards defending the reason of why she kept katya over ginger and she was like she just was a, she just won she i'm just I'm not, like it's just like she's like what 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 are you talking about she, if i wanted to get rid of her it would have been the easiest thing to do in the world but she, yeah. she I'm being fair <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, let's talk about this lip sync because we have Charlie XCX as the guest judge, which, you know, typically when there's a musical guest, they're going to use one of Charlie's songs or one of the the guest songs. <laughs> of course, it's only Charlie XCX songs. That's it. That's all we get. That's all it is. That Forever and like, ever. We have Patti LaBelle. And we've decided <laughs> for now it's Charlie XCX song. I mean, I honestly wouldn't put it past them. But <laughs> it's so funny. So, so they pick Boom Clap, which... When I first was like, oh, yeah, okay, that song is fine. But then once the lip sync started and it's Raja versus the lip sync assassin of this episode, Cameron Michaels, 
Aman, just something was off about this lip sync. <laughs> like it, it was like the most lethargic ass performance I have ever seen. And you know, a lot of people are blaming this song, and I think that the song does have had it, it does contribute to this. But this is not the first mid-tempo song that we've seen on Drag Race mm -hmm. that people still deliver really good performances on. Like, I think when it comes to slower songs, you can either have something like a ballad and then you get like a, a Latrice Royale situation, which can still be very entertaining and powerful. Or you get something more in the vein of like boom, boom, clap, where you have to, you have to like focus more on the percussion of it all. Like ride the beat, hit mm -hmm. the moves. Like it can still be entertaining, but... Both of them, both Cameron Michaels and Raja were just so like lousy. Well, more more so uh, uh, Raja, which she tweeted out. Cause I remember watching and I was like, oh my gosh, she's throwing it. She's throwing yeah. it because she, she doesn't she had wanna. To I, I, I'm convinced. And then she, tweeted, she tweeted yesterday, like I did not throw it. I just wasn't <laughs> expecting to win. And okay. um, I, I wasn't prepared. So I was, you know, sometimes we get caught off guard and I'm like, they I probably told all of y'all, like any other week, to prepare for the lip sync. You know what the lip sync song is going to be, and you know the words. I saw you lip syncing the words, so you know what's going on. You deliberately were but just walking around. like. But it does sound like this was switched at the last moment. Which oh, really? Was. I for think it was song? supposed to be a different uh... Charlie XCX song. And they switched it to this one. I think that's part of the reason why Cameron is very upset. Just because like she had prepared a different song, and then, um, and I oh yeah, so can, can can you guys explain that more to me? Because I I didn't get a chance to read through it before mm -hmm. we started on the uh, the, the podcast. We shall now um, present a dissertation on <laughs> the controversy <laughs> of this Cameron past week's yes. <laughs> yes. So okay, I might be missing bits and pieces, but Same. the first main thing that I saw was it was an Instagram post that she had made. And I can read part of the caption. I have it here. And this is what she said. Cameron Michaels wrote, and I quote, the longer I try to act like it never happened, the longer it's going to take me to get over it. And then I'm going to edit for clarity. I am hurt, disgusted, and devastated by the entire situation. Call me dramatic. I don't give an F. Every girl looks forward to coming back and having their moment to shine. I feel cheated. And worst of all, I said yes and agreed to do it, which is something I have to deal with now and will take me a very long time to get over. If I could go back in time, I never would have stepped foot on that stage. I know my worth and my talent, and I feel like I was used for some quick, cheap storyline. Uh, again, edited for clarity. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and F that stupid song. Is how she ends it. That's how she ended the whole thing. So I think so. There's a few things that I gather from this. I I've gathered from Twitter and from Reddit that they switched the song, and that wasn't the song that she had signed up to do and prepare and all that kind of stuff. The other part of this here that's in the longer portion of that post is her saying, "Some qu every queen has different skill sets. My skill set is lip syncing. This is mm -hmm. what I do. This is what I'm good at." And then I. I get on there and, and I think that she feels like not only do they switch the song to a, to it's not an unlip syncable song, but it's also like, there's so many other better songs out there that you could use her for like, what are you doing? So there's that. And there's also this whole theory that like Charlie XCX a couple of years ago, even wrote, I can't wait for Vroom Vroom to be on Drag Race as a lip sync song. And then it's like, she gets on and it's literally like, Boom, clap. Okay, great. Uh, wonderful. So there's there's a lot of aspects here that I think are interesting that we don't know the full answers for. Okay. Um, and then the last bit of this, I think this cheap storyline is that she's like, they wanted me on here to send Eureka home. Okay, cool. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I rescind part of what I said about Raja at the beginning then. <laughs> because if, 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 if the lip sync song was changed at the last minute then i can understand like not necessarily like being kind of thrown off guard but i still feel like at least for raja 
Right. So I still feel like Cameron Michaels was doing what she could do with the song. I feel like Raja literally was just walking back and forth. I'm like, girl, even if this was a last minute switch up, you know this yeah. damn song. It's boom clap. Like, come on now. Like, let's let's not act like they chose some deep cut off of an underground Charlie XCX album that we never like have heard of. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, so there's also three words in the whole song, you know? It's, it's... <laughs> At least clap. Like, <laughs> well, that's what I was like, because you know, Cameron Michaels, and they showed it when in Untucked when they did her like montage of lip syncs. She does the split, the middle splits where mm -hmm. she like does that whole thing. That's on the beat, like what Aman was saying. Like when you mm -hmm. hit that beat, you fall. That's what you're actually really lip syncing to because that's what right. the song mm -hmm. is. You hit that on the. So that's what I expected. I didn't see any of that. I don't know. The whole thing was just very interesting because another thing that camera michaels uh i think she tweeted this one out you know the whole meme that's like my fall plans the delta variant and then mm -hmm. it's you know right her she tweets this meme and it's her my fall plans it's a picture of her in that like gorgeous outfit Which, by the way she looks snatched look absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous yeah, it's her good. in that outfit and then the delta variant is a screenshot of boom clap <laughs> like the song <laughs> playing on spotify <laughs> and it's just like Oh my God, y'all, like, I can't, you know? <laughs> no, she definitely will not be getting asked by Charlie XCX to be in any future music videos, that's for fucking sure. <laughs> well, it's also interesting too, because this is clearly her coming out against production too. And you sit right. back and, mm -hmm. and like, I, okay. would, I wouldn't have been shocked if she would have been asked for an All-Stars or like to come back oh, for like All-Stars yeah. 7 and such, yeah. right? And so like, I'm sitting here being like, mm, I wonder if, if they ask her, like, is that being rescinded now or? Okay, I had no idea that any of this was going on. So this definitely changes a lot. But yeah, that's, that's, I, I, I probably can, I probably would agree with her. Like if they, like did, I don't understand. Well, the one thing I don't understand though, is I don't really understand the motivation of, changing the song in order to send Eureka home? Like, you felt like you were gonna, like, did they feel like Raja was gonna do a bad job at Boom Clap? That's what, that's the part that feels weird to me because a lip synker is a lip synker is a lip synker. The both of you should be able to do whatever you can with any song. Maybe Vroom Vroom would have been a little bit stiffer competition because it's a faster song, maybe, but I don't know. It just, that part to me feels a little weird. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that is necessarily where her head is at. Like they switched the song in order to make sure Raja would lose. Like, I don't think that's what it is. I don't, I, I think there was a licensing issue of why they switched the song, uh, not like a, okay. but I think that she was just like, Oh, they brought me on on this particular episode because, and as we saw from, well, actually we don't know what, um, who Raja chose, right? Or did, did they all they all pick Yuri. Yeah, I mean you so get to it, see it. It wasn't going to matter who Yuri, wins yeah. or loses, but you look back and it's like this season is full of I sent my friend home and I was the lip sync assassin. If you're Jessica yeah, Wilde, or so I was on the same yeah, season. Yeah, if yeah. you're Laganja Stranja, like like I have to. But there's never really been that much animosity between Kim and Michaels and Yurika. Am I like it? Or was there? Am I forgetting no, something? No, like, no. If anything, no. actually, they were probably. Um, Close, Cameron right? was probably the closest to Eureka on that season than anybody else um, on season 10. I, I think this is more like she just feels like I was supposed to be on for a good lip sync song because I'm a good lip sync assassin. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. This was my platform. And then it's like, oh, we're going to switch all this stuff up on you. My outfit no longer makes sense for the song like all of these different things. And then mm. on top of that, it's the episode that my friend goes home that I, it's my season 10 sister. I think there's just a lot of feelings. If And if I were her, like looking back, like I know that she's trying to do the best of what she can with the song, but there's still a couple moments where I feel like she looks awkward. And I think that for her, it's more of being like, I don't look awkward when I lip sync, but this is because of the song choice. Hmm. I mean, well, I'm not going to lie. I just sort of feel a little vindicated because all throughout season 10, I have been trashing Cameron Michaels being like she is like the most uncharismatic person on this show. They keep saving her ass just because she keeps winning these lip syncs. Like she is such a tired queen. And then she comes back for All Star 6. And this is the lip sync that we got. I'm like, I told y'all. I told y'all. But, but now with all the context, it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
That's yeah. too funny. Which is so funny too, because I feel like the times that I get the most out of Cameron Michaels is when you look at her TikToks and she she's incredible of doing any kind of lip syncing of just like a conversation and like her facial expressions and stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. you need to bring that into challenges if you're ever mm -hmm. on Drag Race again, because then you'd mm -hmm. win like easily. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, we uh, get the lip sync, as we discussed. And unfortunately, Eureka is eliminated here by Camera Michaels, who w wins the lip sync. And we jump right back to the workroom where there is no time for Eureka to de-drag, as we've seen in the previous, with the previous queens. No, no. RuPaul jumps right back on that screen and we hear that Eureka needs to prepare for the lip sync of your life or for your life or something like that and go to the main stage immediately. Which, Beth, I mean, that was just... What? It's starting! The game with the name. Finally! <laughs> I, I literally exhaled and I went, oh, thank God. Finally. We're, gonna, we're finally going to get it. Um, so... Y'all know going into the season, I was not the biggest like lover of Eureka. I have thoroughly enjoyed Eureka this season. Um, mm -hmm. I find her funny, not too overbearing, mm -hmm. those different things. I think that she's really taken what people have been criticizing about her and like not making it like in the way that like you could tell affected Silky in Silky's performance. I think mm -hmm. that Eureka has still sh sh uh, been able to take these criticisms and kind of like work on herself with it. Like you can tell that it's not affecting her ability to do well in the competition. And so there were three things in the span of like the three minutes that we see of her that made me laugh out loud with her. The first is when she's reading her mirror message and goes, Oh, I need to put a comma here. <laughs> and I was like, come on, grammatic queen. That's great. Um, um, so that was great. And then um, immediately she's like, ah, Mama Rue, I got to go get a wig on. <laughs> and she's like looking for a wig to put on. Like, you're not going to catch me without a wig, girl. We yeah. already are catching you like without a wig. Bitch, <laughs> we currently don't have one on. Um, and then uh, it was just great because all of a sudden the camera pans back to her. And she has this like great big like poof back way. I'm like, yes, that's great. And then I love how she was just like, I, I, I can definitely understand and uh, agree with her emotions here. Like she was like, I just thought like my dream had come to an end. And then mm -hmm. I just came to terms with I'm going home. And now it's like, get up on the stage right now. You have to lip sync. And I'm, and I, and I, what do I look like? What am I going to wear? And I don't know. And I, I was mentally packing. Now I have to mentally unpack. And like mm -hmm. totally understand that. And I love the vulnerability of that moment. Cause I could like, Obviously, I'm not on Drag Race. I'm never going to. Damn it. You just race. reminded me. I forgot to tweet this out. I, was, I had like an idea for like a, a really nice uh, hit tweet. Because um, there's this um, behind the scenes video that of Wendy Williams um, that's really, that used to be really popular a couple years ago. And it's just like her freaking out about having to attend some sort of like formal event after right after her show. And she's like, oh, my God. What am I going to do? What am I going to wear? How am I going to act? Am I going to cry? And I wanted to use that as like what Eureka was going through. And I forgot ah. to do it. Now, now the time is fast. But yes, I also, I point that. being is that I also agreed. Um, I, I agree with what you're saying. And that I think that was very entertaining. And I, you know, I, 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 Eureka, I mean, she she hasn't won anything. But I mean, she, like we said before, she has been doing a good job. Sometimes a little bit more. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of those highs that she got weren't. Maybe she could have been in the middle, like safe, a couple of those weeks. But she's been, you know, consistent throughout the entire competition. Um, and so to see her get so close, especially since the last time she made it, because I, I don't really count in season nine because she had to get Medi backed. Right. Season 10, she made the top yeah. three. So it kind of sucks. Yeah. It feels really hard to make it further in your original season and to fall just short of finale on your final one. So or on your second one. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was kind of sad. I was kind of sad to see her go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she's going to have an opportunity, I assume, to come back into the competition so we could very much see Eureka back like this week didn't even happen, which I would kind of be okay with. Uh, but from what it sounded like, it's going to be lip syncs, right? I mean, that yeah. was what I gathered from the RuPaul video where you have to, what was it? It's prepare, yeah, prepare for the lip sync of your life or for your life or something like that. That was what it was. So that makes me feel like there's going to be some type of lip sync competition which so like i think season four what are we down to so let's see so it would be if all of them compete assuming all of them compete that's serena 
Jiggly, Silky, Yara, Scarlet, Curia, Jan, Pandora, and Eureka, which means nine. nine. So I don't know exactly how that's going to work. I don't know if it's going to be like Serena versus Jiggly. And then the winner of that goes on to face Silky. And then Silky, go, you know, the winner of that. That's goes- what I feel like it has to be if it's an odd number, right? Unless they're like, Eureka was the last one out and she automatically gets a bye. Or, yeah, or something like that. Mm. And then it's like a eight-person bracket where yeah. it's, yeah. And you could even do the seeding where it would be like, you know, Pandora versus Serena. So like the first seed versus the last seed. I kind of so- love that idea. Something like that. I don't know. We'll see. But I mean, <laughs> so I, messy. from the preview for next week, we actually do see the top, well, at the moment, the top four queens where they have a video of RuPaul. And RuPaul comes in and says, it's... I, It could be the way that the editing is, but it sounds like RuPaul is telling the four girls, it's time to meet your opponents, which Mm. throws in another wrench on top of that. If then there's some, or, or is that just a weird, you know, Frankenbite cut where it's like, oh, RuPaul's actually talking to the eliminated Queens and not to. I felt like it it was, I like the Frankenbite. Frankenbite. Yeah. I like that. (laughs) I thought it, I, th- I felt like it could be that, but we look, we get Trinity saying, you know, this is a bunch of effing bullshit. So <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. About it, I think the fairest thing is to do what you had suggested, which is like the first two queens eliminated go against each other. Who wins that goes to the third queen and, and go all the way up. Because if you're Serena Cha Cha, you have not been here for 18 <laughs> fucking weeks. Like I'm just like <laughs> throwing a number out there. Like, it, is it fair to? come into the competition unless you go through and beat all these different people like it is yeah. like the odds are stacked yeah. against the or, or against the people who were out earlier and are better for the people who have been in the competition a lot longer yeah it's yeah. like morgan mcmichael is in all stars three she came back after being gone for like four weeks and then it's like they just send and her right because back ben out fe- felt bad about sending her home and had like mm-hmm. nothing to do like her yeah what what a mess um and then yeah i mean it's it's yeah i look i don't know but from what i can tell i guess the whole episode next week is going to be dedicated to the game within a game because obviously how are they going to do any type of like normal main challenge in that episode so it seems like next week hopefully all the answers to our game within a game questions will be answered well it sounds like this is the week that we have to invite rob back because clearly he loves lip syncs they're his favorite (laughs) part of the song exactly and uh we had him on for the premiere of season 13 he loved it (laughs) He was so obsessed. <laughs> uh, it was like, I felt so bad. I was like, Rob's never going to come back on the show <laughs> with us. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. All right. Well, we will, uh, we're going to power on and we'll be back next week to talk about the game within a game and, and everything that, that comes with it. So definitely look out for us on YouTube and on your uh, podcast feed. All right. That does it for us. Beth. Where can people find you on social media? What are you up to? I've changed my handle. No, I'm just kidding. It's still Augusta Wind 11. You can follow me on all my socials, including Twitch. Um, and I was supposed to do something this past Friday for my third year Twitch anniversary. Completely forgot because I went out to dinner. So I'm hoping to plan something <laughs> soon. <laughs> wow. I went out forgot to dinner. your own anniversary. <laughs> well, okay. So to be fair, my anniversary was like three weeks ago, but I was away from my streaming setup. So I was like, I'll be right. back on Friday. It'll be fun. And then I was like, uh, but it's Friday fun. night. And I just kind of want to like hang out with my brother, my sister-in-law and have a few drinks. So that's what happened. But I'm mm-hmm. hoping to plan something soon where I just kind of chill, maybe go back to my, like my old kind of roots on twitch and play a little bit of like dead by daylight or something oh, on twitch very fun yeah and aman i mean you're chugging along with all the harry potter stuff on your twitch channel i am lots yeah. in the harry potter and the champ uh, excuse me the goblet of fire I was like, you with that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i'm um We've been getting a couple of questions. I don't know what the diagram of like choir room listeners and uh, this podcast listeners are, but for those of you that have been asking, where are you guys at? Y'all, we gave y'all 200 episodes of Glee, okay? Like we were taking a bit of a summer break. All right, but we will be back in the fall. So if you're looking 
for more stuff for the choir room, it's it's coming, baby. And, mm-hmm. um, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Amon Adwin as well. <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter at Liana RHAP, podcasting, of course, about the fabulous Drag Race. I also did coverage of Lego Masters episodes uh, five, six, and seven with my sister, which was a ton of fun. And uh, a bird, little, little rumors out there, there might be more than 10 episodes. So we'll probably be back for a few more if you're interested in Lego Masters there. You can, of course, become a patron of RHAP, support every, all of the wonderful things that we do, get some of the uh, behind the scenes uh, coverage as well that Rob and Taryn are doing for the Big Brother show, as well as all of the interactions with the other patrons and be part of the community. If you're interested in that, you can always go to patreon.com slash RHAP, Rob has a website.com slash Patreon. Hey, hey, you. Go leave a star rating and review for us on iTunes. Okay. That's right. Yeah, just do it. It's okay. I, I believe in you. I, be, I, I truly support you in your mission to go leave a star rating and review on iTunes. And that is at robhasawebsite.com slash drag race. Yeah, Beth's doing it right now. Look at her go. Done. Definitely not biased. Not biased at all. <laughs> Said that Beth needs to work on herself a little bit, but that Liana and Amon. Woo, yeah. They are great. <laughs> could do without Beth. No. Uh, and I definitely could not do it without the two of you always with me each week and the wonderful support of Scott St. Pierre behind the scenes for all of his help as well. And thank y'all. We'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.